Hello everyone, it's Elena and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about scholarships. I had a scholarship for going to boarding school in Hong Kong, I had a few scholarships for summer programs and I also have two scholarships for going to Cambridge. A lot of people always ask me, how do you get scholarships? And to be honest, the first step for me is usually networking, so by talking to people who then tell me about these opportunities, I find out about these applications. But I know that networking is currently really hard given the pandemic that's going on. Ah! Hey! That's what today's sponsor is for. Yeah, I was gonna get there. Oopsie. Well, now I'm already here, so I'm just gonna take it away. Today's sponsor is Goodwill. Goodwill is a little bit like LinkedIn, but it has all the functions that you've been missing as a student on LinkedIn. Goodwill is a completely free platform and you can just sign up, start setting up your profile, put in your achievements, where you're currently studying, what are the opportunities that you're looking for, and then you can get started with networking. Even though this is a career-related platform, it works like pretty much all other social media, so if you have any questions, you can post them on the feed and other people will answer, or you can see whatever people are up to and get inspired by them. You can find out about a ton of opportunities through the feed function, but the absolute best way to find out about new things is the opportunities tab. In the opportunities tabs there are listings for jobs whether it's a part-time job or something that you'd be interested to do after your degree as well as scholarships. And to me the fact that they have this massive list of scholarships that are available makes this app really really special because I think a lot of students are struggling with identifying programs to apply to so sign up for Goodwill, check out that list and start writing your applications because it's literally super easy to find scholarships on there. And of course you can also stay in touch with your network, you can message them privately or in group chats, ask people about their experiences with different programs or ask for some advice for an application. If you'd like to talk to me, I will be doing a live Q&A on Goodwill on Tuesday at 5pm German time so you can just download the app through the link in the info box below and then you can join my public group chat and I will answer all of your questions on Tuesday. And I'm back, so let's get into the video. Now, yes, you can find your scholarships through networking, whether it's on Goodwill or in real life, but you can also find them through other avenues. One way to go about this is you can look at your characteristics and then find foundations that support people like yourself. Now, if you're thinking, well, I am not special, there is no characteristic that I have that someone would want to sponsor me for, trust me, there is a foundation for pretty much anything out there. So don't worry too much about having a special characteristic, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, many of these characteristics are quite general and they concern things you had zero control over. I mean, just take a few of my characteristics that would probably qualify me for applying for a few scholarships. I'm German, I'm a girl, I have a single mom, and I come from a family of immigrants. Yeah, I had zero control over all of these four and nonetheless, they would probably qualify me for applying for funding. One more way that you can find scholarships is to go through databases. Personally, I love the German database, Stipendiennutze.de. It's a completely German website. It is from the education ministry in Germany. So for my English viewers, this is probably not gonna be as interesting to you guys, but if you're from Germany, this is a really, really great website. And they have a ton of information and a ton of scholarships listed. So that website is your best friend. All right, so now that you have your list of scholarships that you're eligible for, you then need to decide which ones you're actually gonna to apply to. And for that, you need to distinguish two things. The selection process that they're going to use and the type of scholarship that it is. Let's start with the selection process. Broadly speaking, there are two types of selection processes. Need blind and need aware. Need blind means your family's financial means won't factor into the admissions decision to the scholarship foundation at all. Need aware means it will factor into the decision. So basically, if your parents have less money, you will get some extra points in the application process because you need that scholarship more than some of the other applicants. The way I like to think of this is you have to put your eggs, which are your scholarship applications, into the right basket. And the right basket is the basket in which you can win. So if you're the kid of a millionaire, yeah, the need aware basket is not your best friend. And the other thing you need to distinguish is what type of scholarship is it that you're applying for and do you actually need it? Because contrary to what I think most people think of as a scholarship, scholarships aren't just financial things. So you can have a purely financial scholarship. I have one purely financial scholarship, which is the Natu Bursary, which is technically a bursary, but it's like a scholarship. Um, so yeah, there I literally just get money from my college and that's it. Um, but then I also have a financial and then educational cultural scholarship. Um, it's sort of a mix of both, which I have from the German foundation, which is called the Studienstiftung des Deutschen Volkes. And that's as much German as you're gonna get from me in my videos, guys. That um, scholarship gets me money from the foundation, but it also gets me access to events, access to a network, to seminars, things like that. 
So it is both a financial thing, but also an educational thing. The thing is, if I applied for another scholarship from a similar German foundation, they would not be allowed to give me money because I'm already receiving some from that foundation. Yeah, German law is a little complicated. Basically, they would only give me a cultural or educational scholarship in that sense. Um, so watch out for that because not every scholarship actually gives you money. So make sure you're applying for something that you need. Okay, so now that you've decided which scholarships you want to apply for, you gotta write that application. And here we come to the daunting application essay. Now, most of the scholarship essay questions are very general, and yes, you could give a very generic answer to them, but that's not going to be an application that will stand out. So instead, you want to make it personal. And by personal, I mean real personal. So for example, if the question is about why you're studying what you're studying, um, yeah, sure, you could talk about why law is a great subject, why it's important for society, um, what impact it can have, or you could talk about whatever your connection is, why you really want to do it. So for example, maybe your parents had a long divorce battle um, and you want to become a lawyer because you don't want people to experience the same because you saw how the justice system can fail you in private law disputes, things like that. Um, so yeah, make it personal, really show them your personality and don't be afraid of talking about very personal things. I get quite a few messages from people who are like, I'm not sure is it like too personal to talk about, if it's like a family dispute or something. Um, and my advice is always no. If it made you who you are, if it made you pick your you know, way in life, your direction in education, then it's exactly what you should be talking about. Because you want the person reading your essay to put your essay down and feel like they have had a deep conversation with you and like they really know you now. So give them something to work with because they want to admit you. They want to give you that scholarship. Now with your application essay, you're probably also going to have to hand in the CV. Now with your CV, there's not that much to it. Um, you're probably just going to have to make sure it's updated. But one thing that is important is make sure it is reflective of whatever you said in your application essay. So if in your application essay you say I'm really interested in family law and in particular divorce law, um, but then on your CV you're only doing extracurriculars related to music and corporate law, that's not going to add up. So make sure that whatever you say in your application essay, you can back up with your achievements, your actions, you know, what you spend your time on. And yes, you should have some extracurriculars on that CV. So don't just spend all your time on schoolwork because most scholarships are not just academic achievement based. They will also take into consideration how well-rounded as a person you are. So you want to make sure that you have some things other than your grades that will speak in your favor. Here are two things that you can super easily do to make your CV stand out a lot. You can start a blog where you write about your subject. For example, I have a blog about law and it shows you're really engaged with your subject. You're actually willing to spend extra time on it, which shows you really like what you're doing. Um, so yeah, and it shows you have some experience in something else, which is website design. So you've actually branched out quite a bit, but you're still stuck with the thing that you're telling them that you're passionate about, which is law. Another thing you can do is you can write an undergraduate journal paper. Now, if you're writing a paper for an undergraduate journal, that is a lot of work, okay? This is nothing you can do like the week before the application deadline. Same for a blog. These are things that you need to do consistently. So writing a paper for an undergrad journal will probably take you a few months. And it also takes the months to get back to you, whether or not it's accepted. So don't think this is a two week job and you're done. It's usually not. And lastly, we're going to get to the interview stage because that's probably the most daunting stage. Because at that point, you know, you kind of have a chance to get that scholarship, but you still need to convince them that you're the person they should give it to. So here's how I think you should go about a scholarship interview. First step, practice interviews. Now, the thing is, you don't know what they're going to ask you, but I would recommend asking your teachers to practice interview you. So give them a brief about what the foundation is that you're applying to, what's the description of the scholarship, and then also give them a copy of your application form, or if it's a really long application form, you know, just the key points, and then ask them to do a quick interview with you. That can really help to just be less nervous. Even if the questions are completely different from what they're going to ask you, it will just help you to know that you've done an interview before. Because for many people who are applying for scholarships, these assessment centers are their first interviews. And just the fact that it's your first will make you really, really nervous. So 
just do a few practice questions with teachers, friends, family members, just so that you're less nervous. Another key thing is that your interview personality matches your application personality. What I mean by that is if in your application essay you for example talked about you know your passion for family law and divorce law and oh god I'm sorry I have this one application which is completely imaginary constructed in my head so that's why I keep using the family law example but yeah anyway let's stick with that if that is your application but then you walk into the interview and you talk about corporate law and how important intellectual property law is in today's world they're gonna look at you and be like did you write your own application? Because it doesn't seem like it. So make sure that you are consistent. Read your application form before you walk into that interview room because they will expect the same person as they met in the essay because that's the person they invited for an interview. But just because they're expecting the same person doesn't mean they only want to meet the person they met on paper. They want to know more about you. That's why they invite you for an interview. So they will want to see someone who has the same personality, but then they will want to know more. So for example, if you say, oh, I'm really interested in law and all your extracurriculars are also about law, they will probably talk to you a little bit about them, but then they will also be like, okay, what else do you do? They want to know more about you and they want to know things that aren't in your application form, or maybe they want some more details on what is in the application form. And yeah, those are my tips for getting a scholarship. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you have any other questions for me, you can ask them on Tuesday at 5 p.m. German time in my live Q&A on Goodwall. So just download the app through the link in the info box below. And I hope to see you there on Tuesday. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Bye.